The Portland Trail Blazers changed the NBA landscape when they traded away Damian Lillard to the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, obviously, in that trade, they got a lot of assets back, one of them being Drew Holiday. And that's been the talk of the town recently in terms of where Drew Holiday would be traded to by Portland because reports are indicating that Portland is going to look to make Drew Holiday available for a trade to get him to another team, potentially to a contender where he can make an impact. But he's not the only Portland Trailblazer that could be on the trading block. According to reports, Jeremy Grant from the Portland Trailblazers could be up for a trade as soon as he's trade eligible in January. We're going to break down exactly what the report is and see if the New York Knicks should target Jeremy Grant as soon as he's available. And we're also going to look at Julius Randle's switching agencies. A lot of fans have been thinking that it's not a big deal, but according to one NBA insider... Randall switching agencies is absolutely significant. We're going to break down that and so much more today. Let's get started. Could the New York Knicks target Jeremy Grant from the Portland Trailblazers at the NBA trade deadline? According to Mike Scotto of Hoops Hype, he absolutely believes that Jeremy Grant is going to be trade available in January. Let's pull up the report. According to Michael Scotto from Hoops Hype, He states that Jeremy Grant is expected to be available for trade. Jeremy Grant, who becomes trade eligible on January 15th, is expected to become available before the trade deadline, according to rival league NBA executives who spoke with Hoops Hype following the Lillard trade. Michael Scotto goes into this a little further by stating the following. Grant could be the missing piece for a contending team the way Denver got Bruce Brown and Aaron Gordon. Maybe a team like Miami could take a swing if they are still a player away. So this is a great report here from Michael Scotto, basically telling us that another Portland Trailblazer is likely going to be on the trading block. And this is not a surprise. Once the Dame trade happened, every single person on that roster was likely going to get a second look in regards to if they were going to be traded. Now, some of the young guys, we knew they probably were going to be safe. But some of the older guys on the heftier contracts like Grant we knew that likely he was going to be traded at some point in time. We just didn't know when. But now, thanks to Mike Scotto, we have that information. January 15th, Jeremy Grant becomes trade eligible, which means that any team that wants to go after him can absolutely do so. And as Mike Scotto stated here, the contending teams are likely the ones that are going to look at a lot of the Portland Trailblazers players that are available. Drew Holiday and Jeremy Grant those two players need to go to contenders likely because their impact will be felt much more on the contenders than they'll be felt on a younger team that don't need them as much. These guys are a little bit older. Drew Holiday's 33. Jeremy Grant is getting into his prime, getting up there into his 30s. So clearly we're getting these players that are getting a little bit older and that means their value is going to take a little bit of a hit. So trading them away now gets you the most for them because if you wait, you might not be able to get as much value. So I like the Portland Trailblazers and what they're doing here in regards to trading away talent and trying to acquire as many pieces, young pieces, and picks as they can get so they can maximize this rebuild and do it the right way. And they have Scoot over there. So right now, they are in great hands in terms of a rebuild. They just need to add significant pieces around him, continue to build with him, and also get these picks to have enough to make a significant trade down the line or draft enough players, develop them where you can trade them for a significant piece. There's a lot of routes that the Portland Trailblazers can go here, but I can say for sure that if Jeremy Grant is available for a trade, like when Mike Scotto said he was going to be in January, I absolutely believe that a lot of the contending teams will call and ask about him and how to get him on their team. And one of those teams, in my opinion, will absolutely be the New York Knicks. Because of one major reason, and it's a reason that a lot of people aren't talking about. They absolutely need to think about adding more front court depth. They have one player right now and Julius Randle that is their only forward. And you can make the argument that Julius Randle could play some five if they had a better four available, but they don't. You could also make the argument that if you got a guy like Grant, you could shift him to the five and play Julius at the four to play a little bit more small ball, and even that could work. The Knicks could have even more options. So I still think if the Knicks are interested, they could absolutely pursue him and go after him. He complements what this New York Knicks team needs in regards to more front court depth. 
He is absolutely a stud in terms of a young player. His skill set is great in terms of shooting. He can play good defense. He was great before he got to Portland. Headed to Portland, he was supposed to do something great with Dame. Now, it never materialized because of injuries and so many other factors. If Grant is added by a contender, depending on who adds him, the players around him, and his fit, that team potentially could go all the way. That's how impactful a guy like Grant is and his skill set. You don't see a lot of guys his size, his length, be able to shoot the ball that well or play defense that well. A lot of people have talent, but talent only gets you so far. You need to be able to maximize that talent, maximize your potential, and be able to do more with it. And if you can't, you're never going to be that player that you need to be. You're never going to reach where you need to be. Grant has the ability to go to another level if he's pushed and he's developed even more than where he is right now. Because I believe he has another level to his game that nobody's touched. And the reason for that is he hasn't been pushed hard enough to get there. He's always been doing exactly what he needs to do. I think if you elevate Grant, run more plays for him, get him more involved, he absolutely can take his game to a next level. And the team that gets that Grant, that was able to push past his limits and get to that next level, that team is going to be golden for many, many years, given his age and his skill set. But Grant, again, is a great piece to any contender looking to add somebody that can have a significant impact for what you're looking to do in the future. The problem is, I don't know what the trade would look like for a Grant. We're talking about potentially two first round picks and a couple of players for Drew Holiday. Somebody who's 33, going to make $37 million, has a player option and may retire. If the Portland Trailblazers are looking for that return for a player like Drew, I could only imagine what they're looking for for a player like Grant. Only time will tell, I suppose, but I am very interested to see how the Portland Trailblazers handle the situation with Drew Holiday and Jeremy Grant and what the final results are because I think they still have a lot of moves to make and they can still cause some shockwaves around the NBA. Randall leaving CAA is significant. And here's one of the main reasons I wanted to mention this. We're talking about Grant, we're talking about contenders, and we're talking about potentially who could be involved, who could be teams that could want to trade for him. The Knicks could be one of those teams for a number of reasons, but for another reason that a lot of people aren't mentioning is because Randall also left CAA. And according to Fred Katz, he stated that him leaving CAA is not nothing. Julius Randle leaving CAA is significant per Fred Katz. It is significant. Earlier this month, Randle officially left CAA, the agency that had represented him for nearly a decade. He continues by stating, players in Randle's situation don't usually switch agents, especially when they've been with the same one for so long. Great update right there from Fred Katz. Absolutely agree with him. It is significant. He was with CAA for his entire career. He's just starting his new contract with the New York Knicks, and now he decides to switch agencies to WME Sports. That is absolutely significant, but a lot of fans were basically saying that he only went there to follow his agent. So we got in touch with Fred Katz, who responded to basically our tweet about this, and he stated the following regarding that. Fred Katz stated, I keep seeing people saying this, so I just want to clear it up. Julius Randle's previous agent was Aaron Mintz who repped him at CAA for years. His new agent at WME Sports is Bill Duffy, another power agent. Duffy was never with Randall at CAA. Fred Katz directed this comment towards somebody that stated that Randall's agent switched agencies and he just followed his agent. That seems to be what the consensus was when this tweet came out. But according to Fred Katz, that's not the case at all. He didn't follow his agent over there because now he's being repped by somebody new, Bill Duffy, who still happens to represent R.J. Barrett, actually. So we have to think about that. But the reason it's significant is because he was never repped by anybody else besides CAA. And now he switched. And because of that, that opens the door potentially to the New York Knicks trading him. Because we know that the New York Knicks and Leon Rose are committed a lot to CAA players. It doesn't mean they only sign those players. We know that's not the case. We just know that they target them and they'll likely pay those players a lot. Without a shot of a doubt, Julius Randle leaving CAA right now in this moment is significant. Him joining WME Sports is significant. And because of that, the door is absolutely open, potentially for the New York Knicks to trade him. If they're gonna trade him or not, really is gonna depend on him 
his play, and what happens with the New York Knicks over the next few seasons. But if things go in the opposite direction or things don't work out with Randall, I can absolutely see the New York Knicks trading him away for maybe any player that they could potentially get back that could help the New York Knicks. Maybe that player is Jeremy Grant from the Portland Trailblazers. Maybe. We don't know for sure yet. We're going to have to wait a few months, maybe a few seasons to figure it out. But I can't wait to see what this means in the grand scheme of things for the New York Knicks and, of course, for Julius Randle. But let me know in the comments below, guys. What do you think and what do you feel? Do you believe that Julius Randle leaving CAA is significant? Or do you believe that Julius Randle leaving CAA is a much to do about nothing? Let me know in the comments below because I would absolutely love to hear from you. I can't wait to see what happens with this situation. But like Fred Katz said, and I want to repeat it, Julius Randle leaving CAA is absolutely significant. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a comment below, smash that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Nick fans. Peace.